It's been such a long time since I've played with these guys. I've had these since I started crafting. So these are a good 15, 16 years old. They come in three sizes. The big one's called a double scoop. Then you have the regular size. They also come in metallic and iridescent mediums. These are like, I don't know why that's in there. That needs to go. Bye bye oxide. Anyway, uh, these are very pigmented little sticks. I like to call them chapsticks, but they don't go on your lips. Now to get the best bang for your buck for blending, you need to prime any cardstock you use with gesso. This is like if you're going to paint a house and you want to put a light color on top of a dark color, you typically prime your wall first. You got to do it with gesso. It just takes a few minutes, but it really is going to make blending so much easier. And you can get gesso anywhere from your big box stores to online at Amazon. Uh, you don't have to get a name brand like I have. They're all over the place and they're fairly inexpensive. So I've gone ahead and done that off screen. I just basically painted on the gesso with a paintbrush and let it dry, or you can zap it with your heat tool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and scribble some of these gelato colors down onto my craft mat because we're gonna tint some paste. So these are very pigmented. Like I said, they're acid free, so they're never gonna fade. And I'm just gonna make my own custom colors with some of the embossing paste. And embossing paste is available in all different places. All different companies make them. I'm using white embossing paste here. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use this with dark cardstock, which is why I love using tinted embossing paste on dark cardstock. So I'm gonna go ahead and feel that through a stencil. That's a stencil from Katherine Puller. Any supplies that I use that I can find that are still available, I will link them in the description below. You just need to expand the description box and you'll see that supply list. So you can go and add more color to make it more pigmented. The pink that I was using wasn't quite as pink as I wanted, so I'm gonna mix in a little bit of red so you can have a lot of fun mixing up your custom pastes. And then I'll go ahead and blend that on. I'm just making sure that I am using colors that like each other that are friends <laughs> and not that are opposite on the color wheel because I don't want my mix to turn to brown or mud you know when you, when you mix those opposite colors on the color wheel they cancel each other out and then you get you know a not so pretty color I do have a video on making your own color wheel I'll link it in the description below if you want it you can make one for free all right so I'm going ahead and just blending that through I'm using this little spatula it's from Nuvo I like it because it's very flexible you can also use a little kitchen spatula you might find at the dollar store they're all over the place so then I'll go ahead and peel this up and this is my favorite this is so stinking pretty I cannot even the color so seamless blending. and I love that it's against black cardstock. But I still have some of that paste left on my surface. I'm using this watercolor paper palette. Uh, I use it for my watercolors, but it's great because I can just crumple up that paper when I'm done and throw it away and I don't have to do much cleaning. As long as I stay on top of the, the paper, which I shift all over the place, you'll see. Anyway, so I did a little partial stenciling right there, same stencil, two different looks. And let's take a close up at these projects once they're dry. Isn't that just pretty? I'll do some close-ups here, but you can get two different looks. I just, this is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite background out of all the backgrounds I'm going to make. That's not true. I love them all, but I love this one in particular. So it's just pretty. It blends. It's got a little bit of dimension because it's embossing paste, and this one is just super cool, all using the same paste and the same stencil. So I love just stretching those supplies. They're already out on your table. Why not use them as much as you can? All right, again, this is primed with gesso. I just painted it on like you would paint on anything with the paintbrush you can even use a spatula let it dry I'm going ahead and swiping on some different colors and I'm using a wet wipe to blend this together again I'm using colors that complement each other they sit next to each other on the color wheel so I won't get any muddy colors and it just blends so easy with that wet wipe you can use a damp uh, kitchen towel uh, you can dampen your finger and spread it however you want so this is super cool because you're going to lift this pattern from the stencil off that background. So lay your stencil over the top and I am being pretty vigorously pressing my wet wipe through and I am just peeling up some of that pattern. So I'm gonna reveal that stenciled background. And that is just so cool. I missed a top in the uh, spot in the top left-hand corner. So I'll line that stencil back up and get it all fixed. It's cool. And if you look carefully, that purple has some metallic sheen to it because that's a metallic gelato that I used there for the purple. And then I'll go ahead and set that aside to dry. They say once it's completely dry, it's permanent to the touch, but I always give it a little spray with my Krylon fixative sealer. It's a little spray, just take it outside and spray it, and uh, that just locks everything in place. All right, this is a little dripping technique, so I'm just spreading some of those gelatos up at the top. I'll try to activate it a little bit with my wet wipe, and then I will just spray the mess out of this. 
Now you just keep spraying and moving and squiggling. You can use the paintbrush if you don't like getting your hands dirty. But once that mixture starts to thin out at the top, it really starts to create these beautiful drip looks. And this is gonna turn out to be a beautiful sunset once I'm done, believe it or not. It's hard to tell right now. But just keep playing and having fun. Use different colors. You can create a rainbow. You can do ombre, so use the same of the color. Uh, do whatever you want and have a lot of fun, but don't give up. Just keep playing and spritzing with water. It's just paper. It's okay until you get the desired look that you want. This is pretty wet now, so I'm going to go ahead and dry it with my heat gun. While I'm doing that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Ritual. They are a vitamin company, believe it or not, and this is kind of odd to put on my channel, but I actually like these vitamins. They have a little minty taste too, which is cool. When you open the lid, it smells like peppermint, so they even smell good. But anyway, these are the actual vitamins that I got. I got one for myself, I got one for my son, one for my daughter, and one for my husband. So they all have different uh, they even have gummies if you're under four. They're labeled, so you, the ingredients are labeled, so you know exactly what you're getting. There's no hidden weird stuff up in there. They're vegan, they're gluten-free, they're non-GMO. Uh, so I just I just love them, so I thought I'd share them with you. You can get 20% off your first month just by clicking the link in the description below. So if you're interested, be sure to check that out. All right, we're gonna do a little smushing here too. So I did the same thing, scribbled some gelatos down on my mat, sprayed some water, and then I'm just pressing in. Now again, all of my panels have been coated with uh, gesso. Typically I just take a normal eight and a half by 11. I just paint on the gesso, let it dry, and then cut it into four parts to get my card bases. So I decided to add a little green. This kind of is like a grungy mixed media look, which is like, whoa, I don't do mixed media, but I love the look of this. So then you just clean it up as you go. I'm using my wet wipes to clean too. And here's kind of a look at those two, side by side. So different looks, but using very similar techniques. This turned out beautifully. It's like a fiery explosion in the sky. And here's this like grungy mixed media kind of look. Super cool backgrounds you can do a lot with. My favorite ways to use gelatos is by going ahead and putting them directly onto a stamp. This is from Penny Black, it's called Snow Blanket, and you can just scribble directly onto the stamp. So just grab your colors, go to town, do whatever you wanna do, doesn't matter, mix up the different mediums or the different finishes, maybe you want some metallic in there, whatever, it doesn't matter. So once you get all the colors on there and you scribble them on there, you're going to go ahead and spritz the stamp a little bit to activate the gelato. So I give it like four or five spritz. You'll actually see little water beads bubble up on the stamp. And then I'm just gonna take my paper and press it directly into the stamp instead of doing it the opposite way because I don't want any of my gelatos to shift when I'm messing with the stamp itself. So just press the paper on there, it'll be okay. And this is just a gorgeous look here. So here's a it's all dry look at all the different dimension and the shading that you get just from coloring a stamp we got it out let's go ahead and do it a second time maybe i'll add in a different color add in a little yellow it'll get you some orange because you're mixing the red and the yellow together do the same thing give it a spritz take your paper press it down use your hands it's okay just make sure your paper does not shift all over the place and then when you lift it up you'll get a second card background that you can use and you get two totally different looks here. So here's the one I just made here with the, adding the yellow. Isn't that cool? And then here's the original one that we made paired together. Two different backgrounds. A twofer. You know I love my twofers. I love using gelatos with my embossing folders. Now I'll, all I have are 3D embossing folders at this point, but any embossing folder you have will work. I'm going to go ahead and scribble it on the side that is raised up. So I'm going to scribble it in on that side. Go ahead and spritz it with water and run it through my embossing machine like I would whatever your sandwich is for an embossing folder. I'm just showing the same footage again so you can see this is the side that is raised up so it's not going to hold as much gelatos versus the other side which I'll show you in a second. They're both beautiful whatever your pleasure but either side that you color is going to give you a different look. So here I am running it through my machine and when I peel it out uh, it is a beautiful letterpress look with looks like little ink blots stuck in there. It is very nice. I can go ahead and run it through a second time. I didn't add any more ink, any more water, nothing, or any more gelatos, not ink. And you get these two beautiful, beautiful looks here. See that? Pretty. And here's a close-up at those pictures there. I just think this is just a really cool, very unique look that you're getting here. Now, if you were to run it through and put the color on the other side, 
it's gonna look like the card on the right because it's dented in, so it will hold more gelatos, so it'll hold more color. So either one is good, it's just whatever you your preference is, right? So here are a bunch of different ways to use those gelatos. I've done gelato videos in the past and I get a lot of comments like, I've had these forever, I don't know what to do with them, I'm so glad I've seen them. Pull them out if you have them. They're available on Amazon, they have them in Michaels, uh, they're very inexpensive, you can just get a few colors, but they last a lifetime. You saw the, you know, at the beginning of the video how many I have. So you can do a lot with them. So if you have them, I encourage you to pull them out and try them. My next video is gonna show you what you can do with gesso. All right, you don't wanna just buy gesso just to use it with gelatos. You can use gesso with a bunch of other techniques as well. So we'll get into that in the next video. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.